What's going on, Slay Bays? It's Ashley, and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be sitting down and filming a full face of first impressions. I haven't filmed one of these videos in a hot minute. I used to do them like back to back to back, and recently I've kind of taken a step back and started filming other things, but I am finally here to film a full face of first impressions. Everything on my face is a first impressions, and I am obsessed. It is very rare that I film one of these videos and I love every single one of the products, but today is one of those days. So I really think you guys are going to enjoy this video. If you guys have not yet subscribed, what are you doing? Make sure you guys press that red subscribe button. Also, while you're at it, click that little bell because half of you don't even have your notifications turned on and honey, that is a situation. Make sure you click that bell and without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into the video. I'm starting today's video off with my brows done, which reminds me, can you tell a difference? I did get my brows shaped up. I honestly could not bear to look at myself anymore with my eyebrows looking the way they were looking in my previous video. So we got a little shape up. Also, I have my lids primed already. I used a little bit of the P. Louise Base 2, which I am so obsessed with. I have not put this down since I originally tested it out in my Jeffree Star controversy video. So I highly, highly recommend this. I'm now gonna jump into eyeshadow. Now this is an eyeshadow palette I've had in my collection for a little minute. I just haven't gotten around to playing with it on camera. And that is the Carly Bible palette. First and foremost, huge congrats to Carly. This is such a huge accomplishment. I really, really love the packaging. These kind of look like rhinestones, like really pretty studs that are raised a little bit. So it feels very nice. Also, this is just a standard ABH palette. We have shimmers, we have mattes, we have a mirror, and then it also comes with a dual ended brush. So nothing too different here. The first shade I'm gonna go in with is a shade called Cindy right here. It is a really beautiful, soft peach shade and I'm gonna use that as my transitional shade. I also want you guys to know that I did not set down this base. Honestly, this base performs amazing on its own without having to do anything else. The shadows really just pop and glide right on top of it, which I love. Look at that pigment. I'm now gonna go in with the shade called Chai. It's that really beautiful soft brown shade. I'm taking it on an M507 and I'm really gonna start working this in the crease just a little bit, but I'm not gonna take it above the shade called Cindy. I'm really just putting it in my crease to kind of warm it up just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna switch over to an M514 and I'm just gonna blend it out. So I'll definitely say that this soft brown shade is so beautiful. Like it's so different than a lot of the other soft brown shades I've tried before. It's just soft. It's not too brown. It's not too warm. It's like the perfect like in between neutral soft brown. I'm now gonna go in with the shade called Steph. Steph. I have no idea what that means to Carly, but it's a pretty shade. So I'm gonna take it on an M507 and I'm going to lightly start feathering it right here in the outer V. I'm gonna use this color to really just like deepen up the look. I feel like anytime I'm using like a newer ABH palette, I'm just like- They've done studies, you know, it works every time. Unless it's like subculture and it's a complete disaster, but this one definitely isn't like that. They are a little softly packed, so you do get a little bit of kickback in the pan, but it's not something I'm too concerned with. Again, I'm just really taking this and I'm buffing it in the outer V. Ooh, that is gorgeous, like so pretty. Now I'm not entirely sure if you can tell, but I'm really just focusing the shade like right in the outer V of my eye. I'm not taking it in the very like inner crease area. I really just wanna keep this right out here, which is different than what I normally would do. Normally I would take this color and just put it like all right in here, but I'm really just concentrating the shade in a certain area. And I really like the way it looks so far. I wanna go in with the shade called Aura. This is such a beautiful rose gold. I really just wanna stick that all over the lid. I feel like it's going to complement the look beautifully. But first I am gonna cut out a little bit of lid space with my P. Louise Base 2. So 
So now that my crease is nice and cut, I'm gonna go in with that shade called Aura, which is that really beautiful, kind of like rose gold shade on a Morphe M124. And I'm going to put this all over, just to add a little bit of glitz, a little bit of glam, like, I don't know, I'm just so obsessed with rose gold. And I think this is going to look Stunning. I'm applying this completely dry just because I always like to start off with a dry brush just to see how well they stick onto the lid and this is sticking really really nicely again completely dry not wet at all and it looks beautiful So this is such a beautiful eye look, but I wanna amp it up. I wanna take it to the next level. Y'all, all I know is now that the holidays are here, you guys are gonna see me use glitter a lot more on my channel, but I wanna do it in a way that's very tasteful and timeless. This is actually what I've been doing for like the past two days. I am gonna take this little loose glitter kit right here by ABH. The retail value on this is $40, but it is an $88 value. You get five loose glitters and one little mini glitter adhesive which I already have right here. The glitter I'm gonna use for today's look is called Jolly. It's a really pretty peachy glitter. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the adhesive. What I actually like to do is take some on the back of my hand and then I'll dab my finger into it, press it onto my eyelids and then just put the glitter over top just so that way the glitter is spread very nice and even all over the lid and it's not chunky or anything like that. After I have that glitter on there, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more of Stev and I'm just gonna kind of look it inwards to give it more of a better blend. You guys can't tell me that glitter does not look phenomenal. Okay, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a little bit of Bare, which is just a bone colored shadow. I'm gonna use this as my brow bone highlight. Totally not necessary, but I really just wanted to use another color in the palette because I feel like I barely dipped into the shades, but this is a palette I'm definitely gonna use in like future videos because it is so beautiful. Also, another thing I noticed about this palette is I feel like you can use all of these shades to get a really pretty warm look. And then on the top is all cool tone shades to get a really nice, cool tone look so I feel like she really thought out the palette and the placement it just makes sense and it also makes the palette very user-friendly so if you're not really like advanced in makeup I feel like the way she laid out the palette makes it very very easy to use the shades to get a complete look so love that what I'm gonna do is I am gonna put on some mascara and falsies and then we will start working on the rest of the face not gonna do liner I'm not trying to stress myself out today Let's just move on, okay? Eventually. So I went ahead and popped on my falsies. I am wearing a pair of Kiss lashes in the style Brazier. I'll have a little picture of it right here on the screen, just so that way you guys know what lash style I'm wearing. I'm now gonna start working on my face. I do have a lot of like face products that are brand spanking new. The first one is by ColourPop. This is the brand new Pretty Fresh Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Primer. I have the box here. It says it is a dermatologist tested gluten-free, silicone-free, paraben free and vegan formula which is great it's ideal for combo dry and normal skin types which is pretty much all skin types I know some people really aren't into silicone primers honestly I feel like you either love them or you hate them I honestly don't mind but I also really really like this one it feels very very nice and hydrating on my skin which is awesome because right now my skin is so dry it is crazy like the other day I put on makeup for the first time and I literally looked old like it was so bad I had no idea what to do so I really went in with all of my moisturizers all of my oils to really make sure my skin was nice and hydrated so this is a really really nice on the skin I'm now gonna move on to a foundation now I do have a foundation to try and test out in today's video it is a mattifying foundation so I may have to mix a little bit of oil into it but it is this one right here by Frankie Rose cosmetics this is a new brand that I'm really testing out and really trying to get a feel for just to see what they have to offer I do have three foundation shades here. I have Vintage, Olive, and also this one right here called Neutral. I think I am going to lean a little bit more on the neutral side just because the other two look pretty dark for me. Ooh, it comes with a little twist pump actually. 
How do you open this? Oh, there we go. All right, so I pumped them on the back of my hand and it is fluid in the slightest bit. I'm gonna mix a little bit of my Ferris Ali oil in with it because like I said, my skin has not been in the best place and I don't want it to be just like very, very matte and dry. So I'm gonna start dotting it all over on this side. I'm just going straight in. I didn't even really color match myself simply because like this is all I got. So we gotta make something work. I'm gonna take my e.l.f. sponge and I'm gonna use this to buff and blend it into the skin. Ooh, okay, I think I made a good choice with neutral. It complements my neck very, very well. Compliments, it matches my neck pretty well. You don't want your foundation to compliment your neck. You want it to match your neck. <laughs> but so far, this looks top notch. Imperfections. Wear. I'm going to do the other side and do about two drops of that Ferris Ali oil again. Ooh, I feel like this really gives me like an airbrush natural finish. It really just depends what you're into. If you have oily skin, definitely don't put oil in your foundation. But again, my skin has been super dry recently. Verdict, really love the coverage of the foundation. I love how it looks on my skin right now. Again, not true to a mattifying formula because I did mix the oil in, but I have to make things work for my skin type. I do wanna quickly go in with some of the KKW Beauty Contour Six. I've been so eager to try and test these out. I did include them in my recent haul video. So I'm gonna first start off with the contour side. I have medium and also medium two. So I think, just gonna take a little bit of medium. I'm gonna flip it over and just use some of medium too. And I'm just gonna color it on really. It's kind of slipping and sliding with my foundation, but I'm confident I can make it work. I'm gonna use this brush right here, which is a Pro Foundation number 47 by Sephora collection. And I'm gonna buff it into the skin. I probably should have got like deep because I don't think that this is gonna be dark enough for me. So I'm gonna take my brush and brush it onto the stick just because this is how I would prefer to apply it anyways. And I'm just gonna kind of tap it in this area and use the brush to blend out the contour I put there before. I don't know what it is, but I feel like using a cream contour, like a cream stick, gives you such a beautiful and natural finish. If you guys have tried these, let me know. I would love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. Also, if you are of my skin tone, what shade did you pick up? What shade did you find was your perfect match? I gotta know. I am now gonna go in with concealer. I'm gonna use a brand new concealer from ColourPop. This is a part of the Pretty Fresh collection. I have two shades. I have light 40N and also medium 100N. I'm gonna mix the two just because this one's way too light and this one's way too dark. So we're gonna do a cocktail. I do have a big box of the concealers over here, my makeup collection, but I didn't really want to go through it. So I'm like, I'll just mix these two because I did send these in a separate box. Mixing a little bit of that medium in there because I don't want my under eyes to be too stark and harsh. ColourPop also came out with a little sponge, which is also a part of the Pretty Fresh collection. So I'm gonna use this to blend out the concealer. Ooh. That is pretty. So for me, like my first impression on this concealer is that it definitely is a full coverage concealer. My under eyes look incredible. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to really dig into the big like PR set that they sent over for the concealers and find my perfect shade because I did just have to mix two together. But I feel like when I find my perfect shade, this is just gonna be everything and more. Question of the day, what do you guys look for in a concealer? Do you like a sheer buildable concealer? Or do you guys like more of a full coverage wham bam, like cover all my dark circles? 
type of concealer, let me know down below in the comments because I know everyone has like their preference and I just wanna know, like let's have a conversation. I'm also gonna take some of this concealer on my chin. Again, this is the darker shade but I am mixing a little bit of the lighter one. So far, so good with this concealer, y'all. So far, so good. I have no complaints. So, so far, this first impressions is going incredible. Like, wow. Yes. I just love the way my eyes look. I love the way my base looks, the concealer, like everything looks incredible, airbrush flawless. I'm now gonna go in with a little bit of loose powder. This right here is new from Urban Decay. This is the ultimate brush off set and go loose powder. I have mine in the shade Fair, simply because I felt like the translucent one was gonna be way, way, way too light. And y'all know, Flashback Mary, that's not a cute look. Flashback Mary. Ah! We're trying to avoid that at all cost. I am just gonna take off the little plastic right in here with a pair of tweezers. And we're gonna go to town. I'm probably not gonna use the brush underneath my eyes because I do want to use something a little bit more precise. So I'm just gonna use this sponge right here by ColourPop, the pretty fresh one. And I'm gonna use this to really set down my under eyes before they start to crease on me. Oh my God. Do I love this? It doesn't even look like I have powder on underneath my eyes. Is this a powderless powder? Like... Wow. I'm gonna take a little bit of that powder in all the areas where I actually put that concealer. And then I'm gonna go in with the brush off brush. But for now, I'm just kind of dipping my sponge like right in here just because I don't know what's gonna happen, okay? It looks so smooth, it mattifies like no other, but it doesn't look cakey, crepey, or chunky. I'm now gonna use the brush, so I guess it's like, I'm not sure how this works, actually. Oh my God, it's a lot of powder. I'm just pressing this on to my foundation. I don't really want to like swipe or anything like that because I really don't want to alter like what's underneath, especially like my cream bronzer. So I'm really just stamping it and pressing it into the skin. This is unlike anything I have ever tried. I really love the concept. I feel like the powder is so fine that it doesn't look chunky or crepey whatsoever, which is what I really look for in a powder. I'm now going to move on to bronzer. I have two new bronzers from ColourPop. This is a part of their brand new collection, the coconut one. This one is called Talk to the Palm. How cute is that, right? And then we have Coconut Beach. Honestly, they look pretty similar, but I think I'm gonna opt for this one over this one. This one's called Talk to the Palm. So I'm gonna use Coconut Beach and I'm gonna use this to bronze up my skin. Oh, oh my God. God. I got a lot of kickback in the pan. Very, very softly packed, so definitely just be cautious. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the bronzer called Talk to the Palm, and I'm going to run this alongside my nose to kind of just chisel it out a little bit. A little nose natcheroo, we love a good nose natch. And I'm using Talk to the Palm because it's not as warm as Coconut Beach. A warm nose contour doesn't look cute on anyone, literally anyone. A few moments later. <gasps> Honey, I just turned into... I'm taking an M514 and I'm lightly buffing out the edges. You know what? I also need a face powder. Oh my lord, this is a situation. Don't judge me. I have a little bit of my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder and I'm going to use a little bit of this to really just tone it down my nose contour this is a little trick i like to do if things start to get out of control just go in with a little bit of your face powder to kind of like bring it back down like we're all the way up here we need to be like here i'm gonna take a little bit of my face powder on that pretty fresh sponge and i'm just gonna lightly pat it onto my nose i'm also gonna take some of that powder around my nose 
lip and chin then i'm gonna go in with a little bit of that loose powder by urban decay and i'm gonna put it right underneath my contour i haven't done this in so long but recently i was like you know what why did i stop i want to be like full glam so i'm really just carving out this area let's actually move on to blush i just got this in the mail by beauty bakery this is the scoops face and body eyeshadow palette and i'm really really excited to try out this orange here Ooh, maybe even this one right here Oh, if they're half as pigmented as they are in the pan, I'm going to be in trouble, but I'm going to go in with a really, really light hand and I'm going to do a mixture of both. I really love a beautiful like orange blush. <gasps> Curl love. Okay, super, super pigmented. So definitely take a little bit. I feel like this palette will last you a lifetime because look how pigmented this blush is i'm really just gonna hit the apples of my cheeks i'm actually gonna take the lightest shade which is called creme brulee and i'm gonna stick it right here let's actually brush off the powder with a little bit of the charlotte tilbury powder and really just blend everything together so final verdict on this a little bit definitely goes a very very long way if you were to get that i would probably use it in several different areas on my cheeks on my eyes like they are super super pigmented but very blendable like not patchy at all and it added a really beautiful flush of color like on my cheeks you know i do want to go in with my highlight now i'm so excited for this highlight it is by milk makeup i did just haul this in my recent sephora ulta and morphe haul if you haven't seen that i'll have it right up here in the cards but this is the flex highlighter in the shade lit i love how it says flex right in here but <gasps> so good i'm going to just lightly tap it right here it literally like melts into the skin then with a brush i'm gonna pick up a little bit and i'm gonna put it on my nose Girl, you can't tell me that's not blinding. Like, this is like crazy. I'm gonna put some right here on my cupid's bow and down the bridge of my nose. So one of the last and final things I have left to do before I do my lips is my lower lash lines. So I'm gonna go right back into the Carly Bible palette and I'm gonna mix a little bit of Stev with Cindy and I'm just gonna go ahead and smoke it out. No need to get too in depth with this. Just smudge some of that shadow right down there to really just tie the look together. And just for the sake of me wanting something a little bit extra, I am going to go in with the shade called Mandala. It's that really, really beautiful like lilac shade. I'm going to stick this in my inner corner. I'm notorious for having like a really subtle pop in my inner corner. And I think that this is going to look gorgeous. So I'm just taking it on a pencil brush. Something a little different. You can definitely just use like the champagne in this palette. But again something a little different than what i normally do with that beautiful pop of purple and to really bring out that purple in the inner corner i'm gonna go in with the ColourPop cream gel liner in the shade crybaby in my waterline And last but not least, I am going to pop on my lip color. I'm going to use one of the KKW lipsticks. I have Nude 2 and also Nude 4. I actually forgot what Nude 2 looks like. Okay, so this is Nude 2. Ooh, that peach will be so pretty with this look. And then I have Nude 4. Ooh, that would be pretty too. I actually think I'm going to opt for Nude 4 with a little bit of Nude 2 in the center. And then a little bit of nude too in the center. I almost forgot about the setting spray right here, which is also part of the Pretty Fresh line. On the box, it says it is a micro fine refreshing setting mist that hydrates for healthy looking skin. So I'm gonna give it a good old shake. Oh wow, that mist is really fine. Okay. 
All right, Slay Bays, this right here is the final and completed look. What do you guys think of it? Let me know down below in the comments. I will definitely say the eyes were so incredibly easy to create. I feel like the Carly Bywell palette was just so user-friendly in a sense that if you look at the color story within the palette, she has it laid out so beautifully. Like the bottom row, warm tones. Top row, cool tones. And what I love most about it is that somebody who's just getting into makeup, they can look at this palette and wham, bam, whip up a look just like that without really having to think about it. So I think she did an incredible job with the color story within this palette. I will definitely be filming more with it, maybe on Instagram TV, shameless plug. Make sure you're following me over on the gram. Also the Frankie Rose Cosmetics Foundation. I feel like it looks phenomenal on my skin. I feel like it could be because I mixed in a little bit of that oil, but nonetheless, it is such a gorgeous and beautiful foundation. My skin, looks airbrushed. Now I could sit here all day and talk about these products, but my video would get crazy, crazy long. So if you want to know what I think about each and every single product, check out the description box down below. I will have asterisks next to each and every single product that I know love and will recommend a million times over. I love you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll be sure to catch you guys all on the next one. Deuces.